The following presentation on sustaining older persons, the sociology of aging, was given by Dr. Sandra Lee Samuels, Assistant Professor of Social Sciences at the University College of the Cayman Islands during Older Persons Month in 2018. The Department of Children and Family Services is airing this wide-ranging presentation to mark World Elder Abuse Awareness Day 2019 on Saturday the 15th of June. The presentation covers various perspectives on aging and reflects on changing lifestyles, environmental influences, and emotions. At the Department of Children and Family Services, we believe that being educated on the aging process and the changing lifestyles of older persons can flag potential problems early and help prevent elder abuse. All right, from a psychological standpoint, as I said before, I am looking at the mental processes, so let's go through this. Your input, true or false, researchers no longer see all cognitive abilities of older per people as inevit inevitably declining. True or false? What do we think? It is true. What we find is that we have to be looking at the process now and we have to be taking so what's happening with perception now depending on the level of problems that you might be having with your senses then that might be a trigger for perception for many of us we might have challenges with depth perception that allows you to know when your surface is changing climbing the stairs coming down and whatever simply means that we need to negotiate more carefully um, memory, we find that implicit memory, which is the, the memories that you have of routine, habitual things that will stay with us. So you might find that someone is no good at short-term memory, but they can play the piano, and they can play that from memory because it's implicit. But explicit memory of facts and um, knowledge information, what we find is that that might be compromised over time. We also have what is called a tip of the tongue phenomenon. The tip of the tongue phenomenon happens basically when you know, you know, you're in conversation and the word will not come. It's at the tip of your tongue literally, but it will not come. And sometimes it's 10, 15 minutes later when you do not need that information. Could be the name of someone especially that it manifests itself. And you're like, seriously? I was trying all along and it, you know, would not come. Problem solving. Now, depending on how active we keep and the um, expertise that you've developed in your various areas, you will find that your problem solving skills remain steady. Creativity also remains steady and can be increased over time. And this is why we need to use the, the neurons, yes? Intelligence, we have two major types. And the fluid intelligence, which has to do with spatial abilities and has to do with our inductive reasoning coming down to just one solution for a problem. We find that that might be challenged, but our crystallized intelligence, which has to do with our expertise and accumulation of knowledge and all of that will increase over time. And I have a diagram on the next page that shows the crystallized intelligence actually increasing where the fluid intelligence will decline. We also have wisdom. Now, it's not a given that as you age, you'll get that. <laughs> I know that many of us have heard the saying, there's no fool like an old fool, not to be disrespectful, but of course there are some behavior patterns that can only be labeled as being foolhardy, yes? And sometimes we have to wonder, all these years, all these experiences, no wisdom? Okay, so, but wisdom is something that we can acquire as we age, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, depression, it can be a spin-off from these cognitive 
um, deficit. So for many individuals, and I find that um, in terms of diagnosis, people are just ready to say dementia because it's a broad term. So it's easy for someone to say, oh, dementia. But unless you have checked all of these areas to see what's happening, then we should not just accept that diagnosis. We need to find out what's going on because sometimes it's something that we can correct, but because we have not checked, then it, it escalates. So moving on, where wisdom is concerned, it has to do with expertise that we have accumulated over the years. It also has to do with the knowledge base that we have increased also. It has to do with good judgment. And of course, these are some of the components because we would have depth as well as breadth of practical knowledge. We can listen, we can give advice, um, altruistic creativity where we can actually come up with new ideas and so on and so forth. Because of our past experiences, we can see pitfalls and tell you, hey, you're going to fall into that. Whether you want to listen or not, then so be it, yes? But <laughs> there is wisdom. And as I said before, it's not a given that as you age, you'll accumulate this, okay? All right, so we have this one theory that I think I need to talk about because Eric Erickson um, takes a psychosocial approach to aging and the lifespan um, development. And during this phase of the lifespan, as older persons, what you find is that this is basically a continuum or a crisis that you have to resolve. So he says that at this time. Previously, what you would have worked with is what we call generativity versus stagnation. So at that point, just before retirement, we're giving back and we want to at least leave something with the next generation. Now, in terms of stagnation, some individuals might feel, well, I'm at retirement and I have not achieved what I wanted to. So what you find is that these individuals may just feel like they're stuck. Now, if you have negotiated the previous stage well, then what you find is that you may be experiencing ego integrity at this point instead of despair. Now we do know that research has shown that for many individuals suicide rates will peak at this point because instead of ego integrity people feel like oh I didn't make good decisions I'm right there now and there's no time what do I do with it they become angry and they have contempt for others and as a result what you find is that the integrity that they should have and feel like they've achieved and be satisfied with where they are in life, that's not there. Our personality is also said to be a factor in terms of how we face the aging process. Now, if it's your unique patterns of thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and how you express them across situations, then needless to say, it is very important as we age. Um, we have to maintain our psychological well-being. That is very important. And where this is concerned, we may take various steps um, as far as maintaining. Do we have a zest for life or is there apathy? Now for some individuals, I don't care anything goes. Um, resolution as well, or passively accepting what is happening. For many of us, I think that the internet um, is there and we can do some research. If you've been diagnosed with something, research, be the expert. You want to find out what's happening, ask the, um, the very hard questions when you go to the doctor because at the end of the day, you want to be able to know why you're getting this drug. Are there any side effects? What will it do in the long term and so on and so forth? These are good questions that we need to be actively participating in our lives. Congruence um, between desire and the achieved goals. And what we find is that as the discrepancy becomes large, so if we have these goals that we desire and these are the ones we achieve and we, we can't get to it, 
what we find is that we can also fall into despair. Positive self-concept. And when we talk about concept, um, self-concept, we're actually referring to our overall ideas about who we are as an individual. Our self-esteem would be an evaluation, judgment, as to whether or not I like who I am. Yes? So how we view ourselves also will influence um, your self-concept and impact also your self-esteem. Optimism versus pessimism. And for some individuals, it's always looking at what is lacking. So we have to find some gratitude in all that is happening and be thankful for where we are rather than look at the things that we do not have. Moving on sociologically, culture matters. Culture dictates the essence of who we are. And at the end of the day, many of us have learned that this is how we age and we have just accepted that. In research, we have what is called a placebo effect. You have not been given an intervention, but you, you're showing some signs, eh? And I find that for many of us, what we have been told culturally, we accept without doing the work. It is said that we are cognitive misers. We'll just take your answer. Just tell me what you think rather than doing the research. So for many of us, we really need to research because while culture plays this role, we really want to find out. The story is told about three generations, mother, granddaughter, and the grandmother. And every Christmas, she would cut off the ends of her ham, and the mother came and she was doing the same, and the daughter said, hold on a minute. Why are we doing this, mom? I don't know, ask your mom. She went to the grandmother and she asked, she said, my pan was never large enough. So culture really is giving us the norms and the values. We actually need to ask the hard questions sometime. If it's not panning out, then we should probably ask those questions. Moving on, we have two major categories that we tend to put societies in based on their cultural ideologies. And individualism is where we are taught to just look after self. In other words, that's what we're taught. And we also have collectivism where we tend to look at the group, the greater good, and how we are helping others and transcending self as we go along. Now, within an individual, you can find both cultural approaches. Um, so it's very difficult, and also because our society has become multicultural, it is very difficult for us to actually decide, you know, whether or not someone can be totally individualistic or totally collectivist. So we are also aging in a context, and we have to ask ourselves communities. And when we talk about communities, we tend to just look at the physical aspects of it, but we also have the social aspects, membership in various clubs, and so on and so forth. So we have to look at that. We have to look at the interdependence that it affords, the cycling of resources. There are some things that we would not have access to unless we are a member. Eh? We also have adaptation in the community, and we have succession, as I said before. We also have neighborhoods, and of course, this is very hard to define. Sometimes we have to depend on the individuals to decide what is the neighborhood. Yeah, because although we have the ge geographical markers, individuals might view their neighborhood as having different boundaries. Yes, so it's fluid. And with this, we have to look at our relationships, um, personal development, what we are maintaining, and what we need to change. And housing, of course, that's getting real personal. And of course, as we age, we find that we might have to downsize. So the question is, do we stay where we are? Or are we forced to live someplace else? And of course, that can be pretty traumatic for those individuals who have to. Um, retirement is another big step during this time. And of course, for some individuals, it might be that they have planned for this and economically, I'm wondering where we will be in terms of retirement. Uh, poverty seems to be knocking on the doors sometime in terms of thinking, because you're a paycheck away sometime from being broke. 
and with all the demands in, demands in society. But it means different things for different individuals. And as we lose the occupation, for many individuals, you find that there is a challenge with our identity. So I'm no longer the teacher. I'm no longer the politician. I'm no longer the doctor. How do I define myself? And the social roles actually become rather complicated because for some individuals, they're no longer able to function effectively. Now, on top of that, we have societies where people discriminate. And ageism is, of course, a big thing where we have stereotypes, we have prejudice. And just to differentiate, as I said before, stereotypes, we include all members of a group. Prejudice, we develop likes and dislikes. And discrimination, we take some action against them, okay? So where ageism is concerned, for some individuals, you might find that um, you know, society dictates that you're old, you should step aside, and so on and so forth. No appreciation for your contribution and all of that. And in other societies, you might find that it's a gradual process. I'll talk a little bit about that. So what do we do with life beyond this um, retirement? 70 plus hours of leisure time, what are we going to do with that? Of course, for some individuals, it means TV binging. For others, it means activities outside of the home. And we can basically dictate our pace of life at that point. Will we continue with our civic participation or will we just narrow it down to our microsystems where it's just our immediate family members that we will include in our circles? And of course, time with the spouse, but what you find, and I think one of the reasons, and this is my take on it, people are so busy in a marriage that you're going to work, I'm going to work, but now we have all this time and we realize that all these little things I didn't notice, yeah? And for some of us, we get petty. And as a result, you find that divorce may peak at this point because you're spending so much time in the same space, so to speak. Now, if divorce happens, there is also the question of marrying again. And it is said that for many individuals, women especially, because there's a gender bias, of course, women are not supposed to propose and they are waiting on someone to do that. And as a result, for many women, you find that remarrying becomes a question of, and it's rather difficult. All right, so societal problems or issues also would be abuse of the elderly, and I have to touch on that. Now, it is said that 59% of cases, and this is coming from seniors and society um, organization, have to do with neglect. Individuals just forget that these individuals exist because you're older, you're repeating yourself, I've heard that story already, and so on and so forth, you know what, I can't be bothered. There's also physical abuse, and this can be family members as well as caregivers, and there is financial exploitation, and for many individuals, they can't go to the bank, so they have to put a name on, and then before they know it, retirement funds are gone because they have chosen the wrong person, and so on and so forth. Um, emotional abuse, of course, individuals might not get physical, but the things that are said might be more hurtful than, you know, for many of us, we do not forgive, so we are holding grudges and we're waiting until, and then we'll have our say, yes? And of course, others could be sexual and otherwise, but the abuse goes across the board. And where maltreatment is concerned, there is no respect in terms of age. Um, social network is very important at this point. And this is where many individuals have to rely on their friends. So you want to make sure that you meet with your friends. And once you are physically able to do that, then you should be keeping that up. So for many of us, and I've always said, maintain friendships. If you find a good friend, they're very hard to find. So hold on to those individuals. 